Nothing has the high impact power of a black and white image. Stripped of distracting saturated hues, a monoframe can properly tell a story and helps the viewer focus on the shape and form of the subject, not the colours. So given this, how do we add even more impact to the frame? Well, the answer is to ramp up the contrast and replicate the look of iconic films such as Kodak Tri-X 400. This can easily be done digitally by taking advantage of the adjustment options in Affinity Photo 2, and the process can be further refined by delving into the high pass filter options to bring some much needed sharpness to the frame. So let's see how this technique comes together. When you open a JPEG image in Affinity Photo 2, you'll be transported to the Photo Persona, and you can easily cycle through the personas by selecting the icons in the top left hand side of the interface. Our first job is to head to the Layers panel and select the Adjustments icon, which is identified by a half black, half white circle. Click on this and a drop down menu will appear. There's lots of options, but the one we want is black and white. Our image will convert to mono and a dialog box will appear. This is where you take control of the mono conversion. Work your way through the colors, modifying the tones, and darkening or lighting the frame to your own personal taste. This step is all about trial and error, but as a general rule, you'll need to take more care of the reds and the yellows when converting portraits, and when you're converting landscapes, it will be the blues and the yellows. We now have a black and white image, but it's likely to lack punch, so now is the time to ramp up the contrast. Head back to the layers panel and find that adjustments icon one more time. But this time, when the drop down menu appears, scroll down to brightness and contrast. A new dialog box will appear with two sliders, brightness and contrast. First ramp up the contrast and then slowly bring in the brightness. Remember, dragging the contrast slider too far will impact image quality, so a percentage of around 60% should be fine for this frame. Head back to the layers panel and select the bottom background layer. Before we progress to the high pass filter part of this technique, we must create a duplicate background layer. So head up to layer, scroll down to duplicate. You'll see the new layer has been created and is automatically selected ready for you to work on. The next job is to head up to the Filters option at the top of the menu. Scroll down to Sharpen and across and down to High Pass. The screen will turn to grey and a dialog box will appear, so drag the Radius slider until you can see defined edges of your subject. So around 7px for this image. Once you're happy with your Radius, you can click the Apply button. Now, our frame will still be greyed out, but we can change this now by heading back to the Layers panel and changing the Blending Mode, which is set at default to Normal, to either Soft Light or Overlay. I'm going to go with Soft Light. And let's just tick this layer off so you can see the difference that the High Pass filter has made. And you'll see there, it's sharpened it up nicely, which adds even more impact to the frame. And if we take a look at our start image, You'll see by adding our steps, we've added much needed impact to the frame. All you need to do now is head up to File, scroll down to Export, and you can save the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. There we go. Have fun adding high contrast mono to your frames, and I'll see you next time.